In this video, I'm going to address a question that's come up in the bike crank homework. If I go to bike crank homework and look at the verification validation section, the very last question asks about, you know, what is the change, relative percentage change in deformation and stresses as you refine the mesh. And what people found, you know, some people found is that the, ch the percentage change in maximum deformation that they got matched what was in the answer, but um, what they got, the percentage change in the maximum stress that they got was much higher than what's in the answer. Let me explain that. And it, in fact, brings up the important issue of stress singularities. Let me go to my answers model. Here I have the solution on two different measures. I've changed the input, so the values will not match what you should get in the homework, but the discussion still applies. So this is a coarser mesh, and this is a finer mesh. And if I go and take a look at the total deformation on the two meshes, you can see you know, the maximum deformation is around 0.052 here, and it's 0.052 over here. So they match very closely between the two meshes. Now, when I go into the stresses, I see that, and I'll do that over here too in both models, that they don't match, um, you know, they don't match as well. And what people found is that, you know, if they came into mesh, and depending on whether they have selected topology checking yes or no, the values that you've got for the maximum normal stress uh, could change quite a bit from what was in the answer. And, and that affected only the, the stresses, you know, none of this affected the displacements. And the reason why this is happening is because you have a stress singularity at, at, the, at the sharp corners. And what happens at stress singularities is that when you have sharp corners, you could have the stress become you know, infinite. In fact, in this problem, the exact solution at the corner would be that the stress is infinite. And so as I refine the mesh, I'll find that the value over here, you know, the maximum compressive and the maximum tensile, will keep growing you know, in an unbounded fashion as I refine the mesh, whereas the stresses at other locations won't change. In fact, I checked that. What I did was I introduced a probe and probed at the center of that particular uh, line. And similarly, I did it over here. And if you look, compare the results, the stress results at that location, so that's, uh, that's sigma um, x for you. Okay, so sigma x at that location, for instance, matches very closely between the two meshes. And it's only over here, it's only at the sharp corner where it becomes extremely sensitive to the mesh. So if you tweak one little mesh setting, boom, this, you know, the value over here can change. Uh, whereas the value, you know, at the other locations for the, the stress is, uh, won't change. So two big takeaways here. One is that the, um, when you have sharp corners, you could get stress singularities in your linear model um, because you know the linear model, as the stress grows at the sharp corners, it, it's no longer valid. So you can get stress singularities, and as you refine the mesh, the, the stress only at the singularity point will keep going up, and it won't affect the stresses at other locations. So that's something to watch out for when you have sharp corners. The other takeaway is that, which was the main takeaway I was hoping you would get from this homework, is that stresses tend to be much more sensitive than displacement. So if you refine the mesh, you will, you know, often you will see that you won't have that much change in the displacement field, but you can get a significant change in the stress field. Um, that's because you have to take the displacements and differentiate it to get the stresses. And anytime you differentiate a numerical solution, you're going to increase the errors. And you can think of that, you know, with analogy to heat conduction where we saw that the temperature was much more accurate than the heat flux. Uh, and so when we took the temperature field and we differentiated it, it to get the heat flux, again, our errors um, were, were much larger. 